Hey everyone, my name is Sadat and I'm a medical intern here in India. And currently the NMC has dropped a notification saying that there's going to be next for the 2019 batch. And uh, yeah, so let's just look at the uh, notification that they've sent and all the information that they claim to have given. And yeah, so chapter one is just uh, all the regular things like the act and all that. So you can read it if you want to. It just says that next uh, exam is the national exit test as specified in the act. Okay, so the general points that are there is that uh, the next exam is the basis for uh, the eligibility of a medical graduate to practice. And it's also for the postgraduate medical exam in the country, right? So there used to be, there still is NEET PG. And so they're essentially going to replace it with next is what they're proposing. And so they've list, given a list of uh, students or the type of students that will have to appear for next. And they are all the undergraduate medical students pursuing MBBS in India. Uh, all the foreign medical graduates fulfilling the requirement of uh, the FMG license and everything. Then any other uh, person with a medical degree and who wants to pursue an academic course and all those who already have a license and they still want to pursue the postgraduate courses. Yes, so here they mentioned that uh, it is implied that whenever <laughs> next is in force, the corresponding equivalent exam for uh, the postgraduate examinations that is NEET PG. They could have just written NEET PG will be replaced by next, but no, they just had to complicate things a little bit. And they've said that the existing examinations shall continue for such time as deemed appropriate by the commission. So yeah, still we don't know when exactly it is going to be fully replaced by next. And for the time being, there will be NEET PG. Okay, and so the chapter two says that uh, next step one is going to be a multiple choice type question. It'll be computer based. It has uh, the following subjects like medicine, surgery, OBGY, pediatrics, uh, ENT and ophthal. And uh, the exam will be conducted twice a year in the months of May and November. Uh, there's no restriction on the number of attempts. Uh, just that there's a time limit of 10 years after joining MBBS. So I'm not sure from which batch are they going to consider this for because the post interns have already uh, gone more than five years. So for them, it would be five years more, I guess. Uh, but yeah, there has to be some more clarity in that. Then, um, yeah, there is no restriction to giving the next step one to improve your scores provided that you've passed next two and they said that the next step one will replace the conventional university theory exams of the final year mbbs not of the third year unless notified otherwise okay so much clarity okay so next step two will be a practical clinical and uh, viva examination it will cover medicine, surgery, OBGY, pediatrics, ENT, ophthal, and orthopedics. And it will be objectively structured. It will have clinical base discussions, uh, simulated cases or patients, practical skills, uh, clinical decision-making skills, and communication skills. Again, it will be held twice a year, and there's no restriction to the number of attempts to pass it. Yeah, so the nature of scoring, next step one will have raw scores and uh, percentages, while next step two will only be pass and fail. The minimum score to pass next step one is 50%. So you just need to get 50% of the questions correct to pass. I think that's a very logical thing and easy thing to pass. Uh, Okay, so the explanations that they've given here is that if a candidate scores minimum passing marks in two subjects and is failed in the four other ones, 
they can appear for the next exam cycle of next step one and if they score the minimum passing marks in the rest four subjects then they have fulfilled the above criteria so um what they're saying is that if you pass in two out of the six total subjects then you can give only four of the subjects the next time and pass or will the person will have to give all the six subjects but only four of the remaining subjects will be counted uh that is something that they need to clarify on and uh, okay so yeah the calculation of the scores will be uh for next step 1 it will be the sum of the raw scores that were obtained in each uh paper subject and the rank will be determined by some new rank generation criteria and that will be prescribed by the commission time to time <laughs> so yeah no clarity whatsoever on that okay so the utility of scores in the next exam will be like for eligibility of an indian medical graduate it will be uh, pass in the six theory subjects of next step 1 and pass in the final uh, mbbs practical examination and for fmg it will be pass in the next step 1 exam all this is not needed and also that uh, the next scores can be used for uh, purposes such as employment scholarship and fellowships again not much clarity on uh, how they will exactly use this but okay they are saying that they might use it okay so the distribution of items and uh, knowledge level of questions they are saying that 60 to 70 percent of the questions are going to be problem solving and analytical skill types. Okay, so they changed it from uh, more of recall type to uh, problem solving and application, which is good. Uh, it's becoming more like the USMLE Step One exam, uh, even the pattern wise and the step wise, Step One, Step Two, all that. Okay, the level of knowledge that is required. will be 60% to the topics that are must know so and 50% is the passing so i think it's much easy to pass right if you just study properly for uh, four and a half years five years it's much easy to pass if you just know what you've studied that's all it's not something uh, that should be that you should be scared of because if you've studied uh, well enough and you know the must know topics and the points then i'm sure you'll pass it very easily and yeah so the paper distribution and the time has been given here medicine will be 120 questions 3 hours then a 2 hour break pediatrics 1.5 hours uh, 60 questions same for surgery and uh, ent and obgy and also there will be one rest day between each of these exams so that is good it's not going to be continuous one after the other and yeah so the time schedule shall be decided by the nmc and the respective authorities yeah so still nothing very clear but they've given a proposed uh, schedule of what it might look like so next step one would be in uh, may or no- may and november and uh, the results will be in june and december the final year practical exams will be in june december june december internship will begin in january july and december june next step two will be at the end of internship which will be june or december and uh, yeah and they're saying that post graduate courses shall begin from 1st july or 1st jan that's it uh, not much clear on uh, where the current interns and the post interns stand even the final year uh, students where they stand on if there is going to be next or not for them so yeah they definitely have to give a lot of things uh, in written that it's going to be there in november and that's what they have to prepare towards 
because it's going to be a different exam for them uh it's going to be a first of the exam that has ever been uh, given so yeah uh i'll try to make a video on how you could be able to prepare for such an exam but yeah that video will be a different one and that's it for this one nmc has just created more anxiety for final year students but uh, i think you should just focus on studying the way that you have been studying and uh, focus more on the clinical aspects and yeah you should be fine